Hi everyone! I'm so excited to share with y'all the latest stocking that I've designed. So I've created a process video that takes you through my process from beginning to end to creating the stocking. It's Christmas time so I thought it was quite fitting for a stocking video. And uh, you'll notice that I'm going to have different techniques. You're going to see me using my serger. You're going to also see me using my destiny. And you're also going to see me doing quite a bit of sewing technique. There's going to be areas of the videos that might be a little fast, and there might be areas of the video that are a little bit slow. So whenever you get to those areas that are too fast, just go ahead and back it up and watch those areas again. If it's too slow, then feel free to just scoot on through the video to where you might want to uh, skip over to. So I hope you really enjoy the process video, and maybe it'll inspire you to create some stockings yourself for those special people in your life. So let me show you what it's going to look like. Here's the stocking that we're going to create together. And the front of the stocking has a weaving technique that's really very easy, but it really acts, it really packs an extra punch to the design of the stocking. So we're going to do some weaving techniques. And I've created these strips that are going to be weaved on my serger using one of my attachments. If you have some other attachment that you want to create strips with, and weave those strips, then you go right ahead and use what you have. Maybe you just want to rotary cut some strips uh, and think about possibly putting a double-sided fusible on the back of those strips and once you get them layered together and weaved together, then you can fuse those all in place. So again, just um, think of the things that you have in your sewing room. If you have what I have, then try using those attachments and those techniques. You'll notice on the top of the design of the stocking, we have some wonderful stippling. So we're going to be creating some stippling using our destiny. So go ahead, grab you a cup of coffee, maybe a cup of tea, and get comfy, and let's create the stocking together. Everyone have a very Merry Christmas. I'm going to start with my one inch strips that I've already pre-cut of two separate Christmas fabrics. I have my three quarter inch belt loop binder that I've attached to my serger. And you'll notice that I've centered the mouth of the attachment in front of those first three notches that start at the left of my presser foot because we're using our cover stitch one and three needles. So now I'm going to take this strip of fabric, I'm going to fold it in half wrong sides together, and then I'm just going to use my scissors to cut a 45 degree angle towards the fold. And that's going to give me a point. And I'm going to use that point to just kind of line up, uh, line it up into the attachment and center it. So you'll notice that I have my presser foot up, and I'm going to place the fabric into the attachment right side up. Uh, I love just using my Allen wrench to kind of do an be an extra little tool. So I'm just using it to scoot the fabric ever so gently into the attachment until it positions itself underneath the needles. So I'm going to go ahead and start serging. And then I'm going to look a little bit at the strip that's coming out of the back. And what I'm doing here is I'm looking to see if my stitches are centered onto the strip of fabric. And so if I felt like my stitches were too far to the right, I can loosen those uh, screws and just nudge the attachment a little bit to the right and that's exactly what I just got through doing. So now I'm going to continue on and serge that cover hem onto the strip. I'm going to take a look once more and just kind of get a little visual. Mm -mm. Yep, I think I've got it good enough there. So now I'm going to go ahead and just have lots of fun serging all of those wonderful strips. Very, very quick and very, very easy. You kind of lose yourself into the process because it's kind of relaxing. So I've got one already um, finished up. So now I'm going to grab another strip. Again, I'm just going to slip it into the attachment using that point, also placing it right side up, and then starting surging it through the attachment. And as it goes through attachments, as it goes through the attachment, the outer edges are, at, are folded in towards the bottom. So the cover hem stitch on the bottom 
is going to encase those raw edges. That's what's happening with the strip. So it's going to give me two finished edges on each outer edge and the raw edges are going to be covered up by the bottom of that cover hem stitch. So now it's just going to take me a little while to get all my strips through the attachment and finished up. And after a while I just start uh, just really Oh, now see, take a look at that one. It kind of buckled a little bit. So I just kind of pulled it out a little bit and then gently repositioned it to where you didn't see the little, the little buckle in the center of the attachment. I always want to be uh, careful not to pull back on the strip of fabric because if you pull back on the fabric, you'll notice that maybe it'll kind of wrinkle in the attachment. So here we have a nice strip, front, back, looking pretty good. And then I'm continuing on there, just grabbing more and more strips. So now I'm just going to really start going strip crazy. <laughs> just going, going, going. Again, right sides up. Just slipping it in that attachment. That attachment's going to do all the work for us. And it's going to be really some easy strips to create a lot of beautiful texture and dimension on the front of our stocking. You'll notice after a little while I just start slipping them in there one after the other and sometimes you'll notice I don't even stop. Okay, so we're getting pretty close to finishing up with the strips that, um, that I'm going to stitch with you here. And so, again, we're just going to um, just easily let the fabric flow through the attachment. You don't want to force it. You don't want to pull back on those strips uh, because if you pull back, your fabric may kind of pucker a little bit. So just be gentle with those strips and you be the gentle glider, gentle glider, gentle guider, and just let that. Uh, fabric just flow through nice and smooth, smoothly, smoothly. After you do a little while, you'll be uh, mesmerized with the process. Or maybe you'll be really ready to finish up. <laughs> okay, we're getting close. We're getting close to finishing up these strips. Okay, here we go. I finished. I'm going to grab those scissors. I'll clip the threads. Oh my goodness, look at all those strips. Don't they look just absolutely wonderful we're gonna have so much fun with those okay so now I'm gonna switch over to my destiny and I'm going into the embroidery side of the machine and I'm gonna go into the tab that says around the world and I'm gonna choose the stocking in that upper right hand corner I'm gonna bring it onto the workspace and I'm gonna to touch embroidery and now I'm gonna go over and hoop so what I've done is I've cut a piece of cutaway no-show mesh stabilizer that's gonna fit my large nine and a half by 14 inch frame and that stabilizer is going to be the base to our stocking so I'm just going to slip it into the frame and I'm going to take a look there smooth out oops I noticed oh my goodness I think I have way too much stabilizer at the top and not enough at the bottom so I'm just readjusting that getting it kind of evened out there and then I'm going to go ahead and tighten up that hoop get nice and snug and then just fill the sides and make sure that I have the inner ring positioned appropriately. Okay, now we're going to take it back over to our embroidery machine. I'm going to slip it into the, uh, slip the embroidery arm into the, the bracket on the machine and lock it down. And now I'm going to lower my presser foot and I've actually placed some black thread in the needle so you can see it. And what I'm doing here is I'm using the stocking that's built into the machine. It's a it's an applique design and I'm going to use that design to give me uh, the shape of my stocking, the size of my stocking. So there we have it. I went ahead and did 
the placement stitch and so now I'm going to cover it with my base fabric I'm just using some cotton fabric and I just want to make sure that it's going to cover the whole uh, placement area of that stocking and now the second one if I was at, if I was typically going to sew out this whole embroidery design this would be the stitch that's tacking down the fabric but we're going to use this design for a kind of a different we're going to mix it up a little bit we're going to get more use out of that design that's built into my destiny and so there we have it I've used the placement stitch and the tack down stitch to get started and give me the shape of the stocking the size of the stocking that we're going to create so now I'm just taking it out of the machine we're going to go over to my workspace and we're going to start playing with those strips that we created. Well, I just had some, uh, I wanted to make sure I had some pins. And I loved, I love using glass head pins because you'll notice in a little while we're going to do some uh, pressing. So I'm, I'm starting here just laying out the strips, kind of uh, placing them on an angle. I didn't really get too fussy with it. I just wanted to make sure it was a nice little angle across the stocking. And I placed a pin on one side, and now I'm placing one on the other just to just to hold it in place. As so I'm just getting started here, saying, hmm, how do I want to do this? Just kind of look at the fabric a little bit, seeing how I want to arrange it. And then slipping the pins. And you'll notice in a little bit, I'm going to realize that I really only need the pins at the top edge for right now. So I've decided that, okay, I've realized that now I'm going to use that little printed fabric that has all the little ornaments on it. So let me go ahead and cut all those strips apart and separate the, the holly fabric from the little ornament fabric. So I'll grab all those ornament fabric strips because we're going to arrange those first. Okay, I'm almost through here. One more clip. There we go. So we have all of our ornament strips. So there I'm going to take and just start lining them up across the width of the stocking about an inch or so past each uh, stitch line to make sure that I have enough that's going to generously cover the whole width of that stocking. And so again I'm just clipping and covering, covering it, clipping it. A few more. And as I get towards the end, you'll notice those strips are going to get a bit smaller because we don't need them to be as wide. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing all the way across the upper edge of the stocking until all of that stocking area is covered. So as, I, as I'm going towards the top, the strips that I'm needing to use are going to be a little bit longer. I think when it was all said and done, I used about, oh, probably about six of those strips. There we go. So again, just cutting those strips wider than I need. I love to create things on the fly and and I also just kind of like thinking out of the box, out of the block and this stocking that was built into my machine, I thought, you know, I can make stockings with this and let it be my uh, kind of a design element and and to where I didn't have to uh, cut a stocking out, sew the sides up. This gives me a little extra way to be really creative. So now I'm just going to get in here and just play with those strips a little bit more. You'll notice as I go, I just kind of love playing with that fabric here and there. And so now that I've realized, okay, I've got these strips where I want them, I'm going to start placing pins just on that upper edge. We don't need them on both sides, we just need to slip a pin on one top edge of each strip. So here we go. Don't you just love getting in your sewing room, playing with that fabric, seeing it become something. So here we go. Okay, so now I decided, let me flip it around. I think I can get those pins in there a little bit easier if it was a little closer to me. So there we go. Now I'm going to continue to just get them all pinned in place. And I think I mentioned to y'all, yeah, that I like to use glass head pins. So the glass head pins are um, 
number one, they're glass head pins. So I have some fusible thread that I had placed in the in the chain looper of my serger. And so that fusible thread is going to help me also uh, once I start getting the weaving done. I'm going to go and you'll see me press and that'll help me. So whenever I'm pressing a lot, those glass head pins, when I slip that iron, it's not going to melt the, the head of those pins. So that's one of my very favorite things to have on hand. I have lots of glass head pins. <laughs> so here we go. I'm just going to keep on pinning them in place. Getting close to the little toe of the stocking. A few more and we'll have those ready. There we go. There we go. So even though that attachment is called a belt loop binder, I've never made belt loops with it. But I have just really enjoyed to a lot of other creative options with that attachment. So here we go. We've got quite a few already in place now. So now we're going to go across the opposite e edge of the stocking, that upper part of the stocking. And again, got to get those pins in there because once we start weaving, if the pins aren't in place, then those strips are going to be slipping all around and it's just going to be really hard to do. So once we get all those pins in place, then we're going to start weaving. Weaving, weaving, weaving. Okay, we're getting there. And at first, when I first started cutting the strips, I kind of was thinking about the um, the pattern in the fabric and maybe positioning those little ornaments right side up or and kind of trying to be mindful of doing that at first. But then I realized very quickly that with the weaving process that we're going to do, it really didn't matter. You couldn't really tell whether I actually had it up or um, if I had uh, taken one and slipped it upside down. You really couldn't tell. Um, this pattern and this fabric, those little ornaments were quite small. There was just a little print. If you kind of look close, you'll see a little, a little kind of a gray loop on the top of the ornaments. But once we start, I started weaving them and they start coming together, that's really not even something that you see in the pattern of the fabric. So I really didn't worry about that anymore. Now, depending on what fabric that you choose to use, um, you'll just kind of use your eye and see if it actually makes a difference in the fabric that you're using. So you might want to think about that with the fabric that you've chosen. Okay, so we're getting close. I must have slipped away from the camera there for a minute. <laughs> oh, maybe I had to grab me a few more pins. Okay, here we go. Just a little bit left. Well, I think I had to cut me another strip. Yeah, that's what I had to do because I realized, oops, I may have cut a little bit shorter here, so I needed another strip. There we go. A few more. I'm getting close to the end, getting those in place. And you'll notice the whole time I have not taken it out of my hoop. So yeah, definitely uh, the hoop is helping me keep it. It's going to help me with the process uh, in more ways than one, as you see as we go through this. So it's, it's going to stay in the hoop while we're doing all of this. One more piece. There we go. Got that in place. Okay, nice and tidy. <laughs> Getting ready for the next step. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my poly fabric and then I'm just going to go ahead and start slipping it under a strip and over a strip. Under, over, under, over, under, over as you go all the way down the strips. Um, you may think, oh, this is just too much to do, but after you, when you first get started, it really um, it starts going quite quickly, and it just really gives you such an it's just an intricate pattern. Uh, it's really pretty simple to do. So weaving is shoot that's been around for a really long time. So all I'm doing is just taking another uh, another medium, these wonderful strips that I've created so quickly and easily with my serger, and um, weaving up some Christmas fabric to give myself a an opportunity to do a really interesting 
little stocking. Okay, so here we go again, just under over, and I'm just adjusting them. And then I'm going to continue to now just grab another strip. And it's going to ride right along that previous strip. So every time we add another strip, we're going to keep it, uh, just kind of let it hug and nestle up to that previous strip. And so on the next row, what, I'm, what happens is you're going to weave um, the previous strips that went under and over are now going to be the opposite on the next strip. So if that makes sense. So you'll notice that it definitely has to be alternated from one row to the other on the, sh the strip that's going to go over and then the strip that's going to go under. And that's what creates that uh, weaving pattern, that weaving effect. It looks so pretty. I love the way it looks. And it's just going to be a process of me continuing to do that till we have all of our holly leaf fabric weaved into our strip side by side. So you notice that you know just placing all the ornament strips again they were all they nestled up to each other and it's going to be the same thing with the holly the holly strips. Those strips of fabrics are also going to be side by side. Um, they aren't spaced out they actually will nestle side by side to, to each strip each previous strip Okay, so here we go. Must have stepped away for a moment. Who knows why? Oh, I, oh, okay, that's this is what happened. Then I started thinking, okay, this has got to be a little bit easier. Um, rather than just using my fingers to pull those strips through, I ran over to grab my stylus, my little sewing, not stylus, but my stiletto there, my little helper. And it has a sharp point on it. So it can easily um, slip underneath those strips and pull them out easier. So my hands were getting a little bit tired, but using that tool, it's always nice to have a neat little tool in your, in your sewing room at your fingertips to make the job a little bit easier. So there we go. You'll notice that it's just going to be a lot easier to grab those strips up. under over under over and just alternating that from one row before so there we go quick 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 it's gonna start going a lot faster now because now I've got my groove on and I've realized oh I should have grabbed this tool a lot earlier than this because this is just making it so much easier and faster now There we go. I love to pet my fabric. I don't know about you, but I just, there's just something about the feel of the fabric. And then whenever you get something going that you're just really having lots of fun with, you're liking the way it looks. Uh, and then when you, uh, you know, you just kind of want to smooth that fabric out, take a look at it. It's looking really nice. Oh, you're getting a little bit excited about, oh my goodness, this is going to be so pretty. I'm really having a lots of fun making this. So now you're starting to see the pattern on the inside. You're really starting to see it happen. It's starting to come together. And there we go. Yeah, that little tool really did make it a lot. Started, it started going a lot faster and it was a lot easier on my fingers there. And every once in a while, what I'll do once I get one in, I you'll notice that I might just kind of um, just kind of tweak it in a little bit and then if the those pieces those um, those holly pieces are a lot longer so those I didn't cut to the length that I needed per row I just started grabbing a long one and then started weaving it and then when I got to the end of it if I had a whole lot left over then I would just trim it with my scissors a little longer than I'm actually going to need and then if I still had enough to go to the next uh, row for it to be the next strip that needed to be weaved if it was still long enough then I would just go ahead and use that so here we go and maybe I should have shortened this part of the video but you know sometimes I have a lot of people say no I just want to see the whole process so we're leaving the whole process in this and I love seeing uh, process videos so 
you're just getting to share the whole process with me. Okay. And you'll notice too when I get started with the um with the strip, I'm slipping a pin at the top also because I need it to hold that top piece in place. Getting close, getting close, and it's just looking oh so pretty. I like that. Okay, so now it's getting to where we're um getting kind of close to the heel of the little stocking there. Maybe we need a couple of more strips. I can kind of see the oh there we go. Let's take a look see there. <laughs> maybe three more strips. Let's guess. Maybe think maybe it's three or two. Let's see. Oh, oh, don't need one there. Oh, I'm gonna start right there. Give it a little bit of a uh, a point to begin. It really becomes just kind of a, uh, a methodical little process. Once it starts coming together, it, it really start, covers the space um, quickly. It, I mean, it really does give it such a pretty texture. And then I'm sure you can start thinking about all the other things that you create could create using this weaving weaving method also okay so I think I have enough there I don't know if I decide to put another one in there or not nope I said okay we're gonna call that one good Ooh, we like the way that looks really for the effect that this gives it's it's such a fat it's such it, it really is maybe it's not fast fast but once you get going with it it really doesn't take too too long and it just gives such a statement. The in, the way the weaving looks kind of, in, you know, it's intricate. It, it just gives it a really beautiful, instead of having just a plain piece of fabric, you know, you're kicking it up a notch. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and take it over to my pressing cloth, slip my pressing cloth underneath it. And remember I had said that I had placed a fusible thread in my chain looper. And so those are the threads that are sitting underneath those strips. So now I'm going to take a minute to go ahead on that first side that I've got it completed and give it a press with my iron. And now I'm going to take all of those pins out on the opposite side because we're going to go ahead and weave the rest of the holly fabric into the opposite side and we are going to be finished before you know it. Get all those pins out of there because you can't, can't weave it with the pins in there because it won't release that side of all of the strips. Okay, we're getting there. Almost finished. All the pins are out. There we go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and finish just a little. Let's finish it up. We don't have too much left to go. And you'll notice in the beginning how I started. I started from the middle. I just think that... Um, it's a lot easier to start from the middle and work to one side. So now when I'm going to the opposite side, um, the, sh the strips are not as long. So it's a little bit easier when I'm flipping them and weaving them because I have less length in those strips to pull through. So yeah, I definitely like starting from the middle. Definitely from the middle. Because again, it makes it a little bit easier. So find your favorite tool. To pull those strips out. You, I'm sure you have some type of notion that is one of your favorites. This is my little stiletto in my um, baby lock had a set of scissors with some different tools in it. It was a 50th anniversary because their triumph um, was released and it was their celebration of 50 years. Uh, with their sergers, and so that was actually a, um, just a set, a special set of scissors, and that was also included in it. That's also the pair of scissors that I'm using. You'll notice here and there I'll be using my my gold scissors, and those are from that set that I that I picked up. There we go. It just really works good. So you may even have a you may even have a, a tool like this in your little toolbox. Again, I'm just going to slip those strips 
to, to slide them to the left once I'm pulling the other ones up, up and over. I want to make sure that that holly leaf fabric still nestles up to the strip beside it that was in there before. Okay, I know this is just kind of really a long part of the video, but before you know it, we're going to be finished and we're going to be going fast and furious on to the, the rest of this process and you're going to absolutely have so much fun. Okay, so again, I'm just kind of taking a look there. All right, there we go. Get it in there. Finish it up. Probably will just take us maybe, maybe three more, three or four more. And we will be finished. Ready for the next exciting step. Okay, so there we go. We snipped that one. Here's the next one. Boom, boom, boom. By now I should I should be a weaving pro. <laughs> and uh, the attachment that I use, being the uh, three quarter inch, there's also a one and a half inch belt loop binder. And that one's wider, so if you want to do some weaving with the larger binder, if that's a binder that you have with your serger, you could do that also. And it would cover more area more quickly, and that would definitely be an option. But I just find that since the stocking is smaller, I wanted to use the smaller one. But if you're wanting to do something that's going to be bigger, you definitely could use that larger one, and uh, it would give you a larger uh, a larger you know kind of effect and it's going to go together a lot faster because they're wider so it's going to cover more real estate more quickly so here we go we're almost finished up a couple of more flips there we go snip that strip oh I think I slipped one more little piece in there yep one more little piece Okay, so there we go. Yay, doesn't that look so cool? I'm loving it. I hope you're loving it. I know you're ready to keep going. Okay, so again, um, I have my pressing station underneath there. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it a little bit closer. Mm, do you like that? Oh, I like it. And so now I think I'm going to grab my iron and give it another press. Yep, exactly. And I'm just pressing. You'll notice that I'm just slipping my iron down and then lifting it up. I'm not dragging it because I don't want to iron the surface because if I start getting too rough with it, you know, some of them might slip away. and We don't want that to happen. So now we're going to go back into the embroidery field on our destiny, go into the around the world, grab that stocking again, clicking embroidery and embroidery. There we go. And so now once again, we're going to take advantage of that placement stitch and that tack down stitch that's built into that stocking. And at no point am I going to actually embroidery the embroidery design that's built into the stocking. I'm just using this stocking embroidery design uh, to, to actually be my pattern, to sew it together, to really, um, instead of having to sew this with a sewing machine, I'm doing it all on my embroidery side of my machine. So you notice I'm showing you this dissolve away mesh. So this is the stabilizer that you're going to see in just a moment. I'm going to place this on top of the strips because this weaving, all of these weaving strips has a lot of texture. So what's going to happen if I lower that presser foot on my embroidery machine and start stitching on top of those strips? That presser foot is going to grab those strips and we're going to have a hot mess. So what I'm doing here is I'm covering the top of the stocking with a no-show, excuse me, with a dissolve away stabilizer because it's not going to stay in there permanently. And so now I'm just, now I'm going to layer, lower that presser foot and then I'm going to stitch that placement stitch and it's going to tack down that uh, dissolve away stabilizer for me. Okay, so now we're going to go to the home screen and we're going to go into the IQ side of our destiny and I'm going to scan this fabric and all I'm doing is go ahead and initiating the scanning feature 
And so whenever that's coming forward, it's actually taking a picture of what's in the hoop. It's going backwards. It's just repositioning itself. And so in just a moment, we're going to see on our screen that we're going to have the outlines of our stocking. And we're going to do something even more exciting. So in just a moment, that'll be finished up. But it, remember, it's very important that you don't go try and stitch anything on top of that weaving weaved fabric without a layer of no-show mesh or you're going to have a hot mess. So don't do it without the stabilizer. So now that you notice on the screen, you can see the image of the stocking. And what I did is I touched in that upper left-hand corner to where I can enlarge. You see the little magnifying glasses? So I enlarged it. And now I'm going into my line features and I'm choosing my point to point tool. And I, I, I chose to where I don't want the machine to ha stitch this line. It's just going to be a barrier line. And so I'm just touching my stylus onto uh, the line of the black stitching of that placement stitch of the stocking. And you'll notice that every once in a while in that upper right hand corner, I'm using my stylus to move that box. The moment that we use the enlarge feature on the machine, that red box is going to appear up there in my navigation view in that upper right hand corner. And so whenever I need to move and look at a different area on the workspace, I'm moving that little red box around and that's going to allow the area to come into the view since I've enlarged it. And the, uh, what I'm doing again is I'm just touching the stylus ever so often to the screen on top of that stitch line that we just created. And notice how I put the stylus on the screen and then I kind of pull the line down to where it lines up with the outline. You don't have to touch it exactly on the line. You can touch and drag it to where it's laying on top of the outline of the stocking. And I'm just working all the way around the stocking until we get it completely, completely filled all the way around completely outlined because we're not filling anything just yet. There we go. So now I'm in that upper right, upper left hand corner. And so now I'm going to go back across the top of the stocking. We're just about finished. I'm going to get right on top and using that point to point tool, when I get close enough to the to where I started, it's going to close up that shape. Now we're going to go into the fill area. See, I'm going to touch the little piece of paper in the fill area. I'm going to choose our stipple design. For fun, I just changed the color to a green. And then we're going to touch our little beaker and touch inside the stocking. And that's going to create our stipple fill. So I had touched next, which was in the lower right-hand corner. And then that brought me over to the settings page for the um, the stipple and the outline. So I'm going into the settings page and I just set it over to inches. I know this is going really fast, uh, but you can back it up and kind of watch it again. So I touch the second icon to adjust the spacing of the stippling and you'll notice that I had set it to about an eight. And then I touch preview and that brings you over to this screen to where you can kind of see what that stipple looks like. So I was pretty happy with an eight. And then I went ahead and touched embroidery and then you'll notice that I'm going to go ahead and thread up my machine. I, I placed white on this, but you can thread your machine up with whatever color uh, is going to blend with your fabric background. Because the stipple is what's going to stitch and hold all of those pieces together that we've weaved. And so I don't necessarily want the stipple to uh, be a focal point to the uh, design. I just want it to really hold together all of those pieces. And so while this is stitching right now, I'll take a minute to kind of mention a couple of things that was going on uh, whenever I was uh, setting the, the settings for the stippling. So being able to set the spacing for your stippling, whenever I do smaller projects like this, I like to take that spacing down to a smaller number and I'll usually use about a seven or an eight for different things like this. Uh, if I want to quilt something, then I'm going to take that number to a larger number. Probably to me, I'll use about a 10 or a 13 in that range. But again, I just wanted a smaller stipple. Once I set uh, that number, then in the lower right hand corner of the, uh, the screen, whenever I was setting that, there's a little 
a little icon that says set and so I set it and then I went ahead and touched preview and continued on out the door to where it, I brought it over to the embroidery side of the machine and so now we have a embroidery design so that stipple is going to stitch really nicely all over the uh, foundation of our weaving on top of our water soluble stabilizer so we're almost finished we're right at the top the stipple is just going to be a nice kind of quiet little more of a um, real purposeful stitch something that's going to hold all those layers together uh, rather than being an accent that needs to stand out I'm just really mainly using it to keep them all together so there we go so that stippling has stitched let's go ahead and look up close there it is all over all right so again we've we've stitched our design and you may not see I don't think I showed you on video but I touched okay you see memory in that lower right hand corner touch that memory button and put that in the memory pocket of your machine because we're going to use this stipple a little bit later on